the fantasy of their day job turns into a living nightmare when the lines of reality are blurred as two B-movie starlets battle movie monsters by day and real monsters by night. Now, if they could only get along with each other. You bitch! When the cameras stop rolling, the real terror begins. I love Lucifer. Created by Susie Singer Carter and Don Priest. Episode 18, up close with podcast expert Tanner Campbell. Hi, I'm, yeah. Su- <laughs> I'm Susie Singer Carter with Donald Stop Laughing. And um, I'm, I am the co creator of I Love Lucifer. I also play Holly and um, Donald. And I, well, you know, I'm Don Priest. I'm also co creator and uh, editor and all that stuff. I do play the uh, vampire in one very scary episode and about uh, 3,000 other voices throughout the. Uh, the 10 episodes, and uh, welcome to this bonus episode of I Love Lucifer. Which we're very What's excited on, to have. It, no, I'm just going to jump right into this. No chit-chat here, because we have so much good okay, information none. to share with so many people. This is so great. I love this person so much, and I'm not just saying that in blowing smoke, because he really is one of one of the most generous, gracious people I've met on Twitter. I've been avoiding Twitter, as you know, like my whole career because it scares the shit out of me. But he, and then I had to do it because of I Love Lucifer because that's where a lot of our community lives. And first of all, besides this person who you're going to introduce, everyone is very, very gracious, at least in our community on Twitter. But, But this person in particular is like literally like an angel. So why don't you introduce him and give him a proper introduction so it's so I'm going to. So fancy. Tanner Campbell has been podcasting since 2010, in which time he has been an audio engineer, studio owner, live sound engineer. Uh, he's a top 100 podcaster, speaker, writer, teacher, growth and monetization consultant, and was recently named one of the top 22 people in podcasting by Podcast Magazine. He has a passion for helping independent podcasters succeed in making a living from their creative output. We are thrilled to have him here today with us, and like any good demon would do, we're going to pick his brain. But we (laughs) promise not to eat it. (laughs) So say hi to the very tasty Tanner Campbell. Hello, Tanner. Hey, Don. Hey, Susie. Thanks for having me. This is great. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. You are one of the busiest people I know. Like, I thought I was busy. You were, like, juggling, like, and on top of it, you're, you're generous in terms of, of creativity. I'm not used to it in Hollywood. I'm not used to people just going, I want to help you. It's just so refreshing for Don and I to, to have met you and realize that there's actually good people out there that really want to help people succeed. And you have so much expertise in, in podcasting, which is still the wild, wild west for most of us right yeah i agree there's still there's still a lot you can get away with (laughs) the industry's changed a lot (laughs) but uh it's getting more and and you know this being from the hollywood space hollywood is now interested it didn't always used to be interested so new things are coming along with that newer interest and the industry's changing the medium's changing but i think it's for the better overall yeah and with hollywood with hollywood's interest it uh, makes it uh, even more of a challenge for the independent podcaster like us and so many of them out there and that's why what you're doing is just so because you really do support the independent podcaster yeah yeah it's imp- it's important to me I, I i was at one point independent i mean i still am so <laughs> i know how hard it is when there's a lot of noise out there to even when the even even if the noise ha- just has more money and not more talent <laughs> it's still hard to compete right? against it when you have when you have no yep. money and still a lot of talent, which is so many of us, most of us really, I think. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think what's what's exciting about podcasting for me as a filmmaker, content creator, is that it, it's, you, like you said, there's still the opportunity to, to showcase and to do a proof of concepts and to, to prove, to, to really be an independent producer. There's still an opportunity to do that. I You can do it in short films. It's... It, that's being taken over by studios for the most part. Even, you know, if you can squeak in with your short film like we did, it's still so, it's it gets harder and harder every day. 
every day. So, you know, because all of the festivals are being cannibalized by studios and mm -hmm. things like that. So, so this is still so exciting for all of us. And, and I think we wanted to bring you on, especially to talk about how independent producers of fiction, narrative, audio, you know, audio dramas, audio comedies, how can we, we want to hear from your expertise, like how can we still keep control, grow our podcasts, um, what are the best ways? So we're just going to jump in and, and like Don said, pick your brain. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, one of the it. things that we found that, you know, because we finished our season one, and, you know, we were, you know, we were putting out one a week and ever sudden, suddenly we're like, oh, we're not putting them out anymore. How do we? So one of the biggest challenges, you know, for any podcaster is building uh, and keeping an audience. Uh, and that challenge does grow for a fiction uh, based series once your season has ended or is in between seasons. So what are the best ways to keep and expand uh, your audience when you're currently not in producing any or releasing new shows? While you're in hiatus. We yeah. Yeah. Well, you you are both doing something like that right now. I mean, you're doing one of the most important things, which is to continue to create content that is adjacent or in service to the existing community because the community is glad that they just I don't know if you guys released in like a binge kind of way or if you went week by week by week. Do you usually do we everything all at by once? Week. Yeah. Week by week. Yeah. Did week, week right. by week. Yeah. So so I can I can promise you and I've had the opportunity to meet some of your fandom on Twitter since we've been working together that when that last episode dropped, everybody was excited, but then everybody was also very sad. <laughs> and the yeah. opportunity to continue to stay in touch with you and engage with, like I said, adjacent, similarly serving content is probably the most important thing you can do. Continue to service that community privately because you want to bring that community closer to you. So things like Patreon or Supercast or just any kind of community, a Discord, a Slack community, anywhere where you can interact with them, during that process and give them access and input because they really love that sort of thing. Let them know you're working on season two, which I of course know that all of you have done and invite them to, you know, run some contests. Maybe, Hey, you could be an actor in the upcoming, you know, we've, we've got a spot. We need somebody to fill it. We'd love to use one of you. Things like this, things that continue to serve the community, even though there's no content because they still want it. They want to talk to you. They want to hear from you sharing behind the scenes shoots pictures things like that articles that update people publicly and privately they love that stuff that's the most important thing you can do so that's that's, that's amazing yeah. advice and and i just want you to break break this down a little bit because i'm just going to go off of my my naivete which is i don't really know patreon i don't really understand patreon i you i have i we do have uh buy us a cup of coffee we've done that I mm -hmm. had Patreon for a while and didn't and really found it a little bit like uh, labor intensive. I didn't really know how to 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 hook it up and figure out how to maintain it. Um, and and also as far as I know, like for some podcasts, my other podcast, which is Love Conquers Alls, which is an interview style, we have a newsletter, but we don't really service our newsletter with I Love Lucifer. Is that a problem too? Are we are we are we missing out there? Yeah, I think there's definitely a missed opportunity for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. this is not as true for straight interview podcasts, which is what so many podcasts, even from the outset of podcasting, kind of the default format that people get into at first and, and maybe just stay that way and never evolve out of is the two-way interview or the panel discussion. That's the most common. And, and for podcasts like that, if you want to support what I'm doing, go to buy me a coffee, you know, go to ko-fi.com. Those options are great for podcasts like that. But for audio dramas in particular, you all build such a dedicated listenership and family really around mm -hmm. what you're doing that they don't want to buy you a coffee. I mean, they'll buy you a coffee. They'll be happy to do it. But what they would rather do is pay you probably larger sums of money, to be honest, more than the three or four or five dollars you might get from a buy me a coffee to have some kind of impact, have some kind of input, be able to joke around with you, get to make uh, stronger relationships with you, friendships with you. That is what audio drama audiences really care about is, oh, we're so blown away by what you're making. How are you doing it? What's going on behind the scenes? And this just goes back to what I, what I just said earlier. You're, you're really missing out by not doing those things. It doesn't have to be Patreon. A lot of people look at Patreon as 
Well, they look at it as a monetization platform, which I think in mm-hmm. a side effect kind of way it is because that's how you gain access to it. But what it really is, is a community building platform. It's a place where you mm-hmm. can have one-to-one conversations, you can have private live streams, you can do those things and build that community. So I think it's an important part. If it's not Patreon, there are other similar services, uh, but Patreon seems to be the king or queen, however you prefer, uh, of, of that market right now. Okay, so and, Patreon. And that kind of takes us into the world of, yeah, of Patreon. <laughs> yes. But, uh, but that takes us into also the world of paid paid subscription model as opposed to, you know, just kind of putting it out like we are right now. What are the advantages and disadvantages of going with a paid subscription model for fiction podcasts? To be very honest with you, I do have limited experience with advising people on this decision. I've probably only advised maybe two or three dozen podcasts on this when compared. I've worked with thousands of students and podcasts at this point, so... That's a much larger sample size than for this question in particular. However, I think that when you go paid only versus when you go premium and then elective support, I think what you wind up finding in the end is income-wise, revenue-wise, it seems to wind up being about the same. However, when you go paid premium only, you send a message in a very artistic community, right? You send a message that you're going to pay for my art. And I'm a person Mm -hmm. who fully believes that you should be paid for your art, but it's not a Mm -hmm. good PR message to send, right? Because it makes people think, oh, oh, we have to pay to get your podcast. Well, we'll listen to some other podcast. People are very, they don't respond well to being asked or forced is how they might interpret it, forced to pay for a podcast. Uh, And you'll, you'll see that reflected in a lot of comments for places that have recently decided to use premium only podcasting on through Apple, for example. Uh, Mm -hmm. And those comments are not those comments are not kind. So I don't think there's much I don't think there's much to uh, gain either way, financially speaking. But I think there's a there's an image part to lose if you go premium only and you don't give anybody an option to listen. uh, If so, they're unless they're they're more. Yeah, they're more ticked off by having to pay than to listen to a commercial or two. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, (laughs) That, that, that maybe wasn't true 10 years ago, but now. Uh, people are people almost seem to not even hear ads anymore. They mm-hmm. seem to be very okay. Yeah, we get it. It's part of it. Okay, fine. L- let's get on with the show. Yeah, it, it's fine. They're not and as especially upset if it, if I think if they're host read, people don't mind them. Actually, they like them because it's the hosts. Yeah, I yep. think it becomes it becomes like a added a little added bonus if they love you as a host. I would think because I've heard people say, "Oh, I love your commercials," and I'm like, I thought because we have the we have. Uh, dynamic ad insertions for I Love Lucifer, and we just started mm-hmm. doing a, a few of them, just at, um, host read, and people sa- were saying like, "We love your your host read." I didn't know they were saying host read. I thought they meant they liked the ad insertions, and I said, "Really? Why?" <laughs> it's like, "Yo play, you <laughs> like that?" <laughs> like, no, they. And so I realized, oh, they're talking about that. So I think I think there's something to that. But if but doing it a, like you can do a partial. Uh, subscription, paid subscription, and and keep it free as well. So you add bonus material like you would Patreon, something like that. that. How does that work? Yeah, that works a lot. Like what that is that is essentially the supercast model. The supercast model is hey, the podcast is free, but if you pay X amount of dollars, then you get access to these things that you don't get access to if you don't. And so that's extra. Maybe those are bonus episodes. Maybe those are mm-hmm. special interviews. Maybe those are blog posts nobody else can see. And that used to be pretty strictly a Patreon-only game. Now, the, the thing that I've never really liked about Patreon is that in today's world, the last thing anybody wants to do is, <laughs> is make another account somewhere. They don't like doing that. Uh, but for a long time, that was kind of the only option because if you wanted to gain extra content, well, Sp- uh, not Spotify, but Patreon was really the only place you could do that. Mm-hmm. Well, Apple and Spotify have come and they've started to change those things. For example, if you host with Anchor, you have the ability to stand up a similar kind of offering, not as rich as Patreon, but similarly, you can say, well, you got to pay for this, but this is free. And Apple Podcast did the same thing. I think within the same week of Spotify announcing that ability, you can now publish episodes specifically to Apple that one can only access if they pay Apple. Now, one of the downsides to that is Apple charges 30%, I think it is, for t- of the money that you would take in uh, to actually... So, so if somebody paid a dollar, you'd get 30 cents less than a dollar as the creator, mm-hmm. which is kind of steep. Whereas I think Patreon is 
I don't think it's that high. I'm pretty sure it's not that high, plus the processing fee for Stripe. But ultimately, I still think the best choice in the game right now, if you're trying to build community and pro provide additional content, is Patreon.com. There's mm -hmm. another one out there called Supercast, which is just a lot more straightforward. It doesn't have a community building element. It has instead more of a, I want to pay this podcast some extra money to, for example, get rid of ads. So you could go to I love Lucifer .supercast com if that was a site that existed and you could you could pay five bucks and then you would get a link that was a special RSS feed that would one click import to the player you already used. And now when you load up I love Lucifer, you don't hear ads. And that's that's something that a lot of people nice. appreciate because a lot of people, well, while they don't mind ads as much as they used to, let's be honest, we'd still yeah. love to hear things without ads. <laughs> Well, yeah, as, yeah, but, and but I, that's that's a much more or less yeah that's a much less off putting uh, model you know to, because it's their choice and it's like sure free if you want or you know or pay mm -hmm. that I like that actually and Supercast also doesn't have a process there's no you don't have to sign up for an account at Supercast essentially you go to I love Lucifer Supercast dot com again for example and you say I want to support you click a button a window pops up you enter your credit card information they give you the RSS feed you install it or rather you load it into your player and you're done you don't ever have to log into Supercast unless you want to manage the payments on that account and then you can but you don't have to so it's a lot less labor intensive there's less friction involved in getting into it but again you're not having private live streams you don't have private blog posts you don't have like a community a discord in there that stuff doesn't exist on Supercast but it does exist on Patreon I'd love to see a platform that kind of solved all of these things, regardless of, you know, whether or not you were Apple or whether you were Android or if you hosted on Anchor or if you hosted on Megaphone or wherever you're at. But, you know, that's not how it works. It doesn't <laughs> exist. So how would that solutions. work? Uh, yeah. How would that work with, like, for example, we're on, we, we go through Megaphone. Mm -hmm. Would it, how would that, because we're getting the dynamic ads through Megaphone, how does that, how would that work or that not work? So if you use Supercast, you would give Supercast your podcast RSS feed, the current one with Megaphone, and you'd say, hey, I want to offer this podcast, but I want to offer it to my uh, listeners who want to pay. And they say, okay, well, he here's what we'll do. You pay us X percentage of every person who supports. Stripe that processes the actual payment will take, I think it's 30 cents or 30 cents plus 1% or something like that. There's some cut. And in exchange, every person that signs up will get a unique, it's not really an, it's not an encrypted address, but it is a address that has so many, um, I always say this word wrong, but it's obfuscated. So it's a very complicated <laughs> looking wow. address. Uh, and they get that address, they plug it in, everybody gets their own unique one. So you really just go to supercast.fm, I think it is, or supercast.com. You sign up. You say, I'm a podcaster. They'll say, great, give us some information about your show. You sign up, and then you start inviting people to it. You just put it as a call to action in your podcast. That's awesome. You could say something that's like, awesome. you know, if you guys are enjoying I Love Lucifer, but you don't like hearing the ads, guess what? You can breeze right by them you have an option. for, you know, three, seven, ten dollars $10 a month, whatever, whatever you, you figure your community would be, would appreciate. But again, mm -hmm. for audio dramas... I think it's more the community draw than the ad free thing, especially if you're hearing that people are enjoying them. And if you guys make them comedic, a, a good piece of advice that I used to give in the early days was your podcast ads are agitators. They're things people want to get rid of. So they will pay you three dollars or five dollars a month to get rid of them. <laughs> but as people become more immune to ads and as people like you who have these wonderful communities start to create ads that are more like more like skits than they are like host read boring ads right because you're doing more with them they're like well we don't want to get rid of the ads it's like part of the fun we, we kind of like yeah. how it's being woven in i mean it would even be cool in for for i love lucifer in particular it would be cool if there was a moment in one of the episodes where there was a loudspeaker and that ad was blasting as it was part of as if it were part of an episode that'd be kind of that's cool. so yeah. great that's an awesome idea that's yeah, an awesome idea we could have had that in at Pimps when when they were getting yogurt. At totally, <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> or that or at the dress shop, you know, <laughs> yeah, or, or the clothing shop on Melrose, not right. Melrose, uh, Abbot Kinney. <laughs> Abbot Kinney. <laughs> yeah. So, so Tanner, so for okay, so off of that, when so that's if we stay independent, those are all the things we have we need to do, right? So and and I keep saying like every year I'm going to work 
better, not harder, because as a content creator, like it, I literally can, I could work 24 seven if, and oh, not yeah. be done with my work, right? And you know that, yeah. you're the same way. And it's so hard to, to balance everything. So I'm trying to figure out, is it better for us as independents to, to go to a network or a, or a studio and have them co-pro with us? Or, or, or should, should we take advantage of the fact that we can remain truly independent? I mean, what, what's your gut on that? I think it it really depends on the individual and what their goals are. I mean, I know people who they are producing because they have a passion for the project that they're producing, but their ultimate goal is buy out from a studio. No judgment there if that's what people want. I mean, you might be able to get a deal. You get a million dollar deal for a podcast. I mean, I don't know what Dr. Death got, but, you know, when they picked that up and decided to make a TV show out of it, Somebody got paid a lot of money, and I think that's a completely reasonable way to approach it if that's what you want to do. Again, no judgment. But I think that most podcasters, mm -hmm. and I think this would probably especially apply to you two, uh, you're more in it for you want to stay. You want to stay independent. And I think you and I, Susie, have had some discussions about Hollywood in general where <laughs> I know that mm -hmm. you'd rather not get purchased by a big Hollywood studio. And I think for people like that, that it points back to how important building that community is because your community becomes your basis of support. I mean, a great example of this, although they did get purchased, I think, by like a management company of a kind, but I still think they're largely independent. They're not owned by Sony or anything like that, is a podcast called The Magnus Archives. These guys, I believe, were Canadian-based, came out of nowhere. Uh, many of their characters are LGBTQ within that community. Mm -hmm. And they just took off like a rocket, all based off of community support. The amount of money that this podcast was able to generate over the course of a couple of years, creating a truly amazing product, really, mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. just, I think it was unheard of. I don't think there's been another audio drama type podcast to ever match them in that effort. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's really up to you. I, I don't think it's good one way or the other. I think it's what's right for you. Right. And I think, I think like just specifically for us and maybe for other people that are listening right now, there's, there's a, there's somewhere in between that studio model and then completely independent where, yeah. for instance, on our, our second season that we're looking forward to producing, we really want to pay our actors. Like we want to pay them and we want to, you know, bring on mm -hmm. maybe another writer that we can pay really, really generously so that it makes sense for them to be part of it. I mean, I, I think everybody who contributes should be paid and and also uh, delegate some of the Stu some of the things yeah. that we've been and doing. Studio time and some of this. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, yeah. You know, basically so, did everything. So. Right. So we're we're sort of in the market for somebody to some partnership, something that helps mon mon you know, underwrite some of the costs. It's not, not at, it's so we're, our goal right now, sure, we'd like to make money, but right now we want to pay everybody at least what they deserve so that we can really put out a great product and not kill ourselves. Because putting out a product like a, this is so, it's a, it's a lot of work, as you know. Mm. Writing it, mm -hmm producing it, soundscape, the whole thing. It's, and then delivery, marketing, it's, it's nonstop. So, you well, know. There, there is a production house out there called Q Code. I don't know if you guys have heard of Q Code. Yes. But yes. They, do, they, they, did, they did that left-right podcast. They have a lot of really popular, excellent podcasts, huge talent, uh, great sound design, all the things that you guys are doing. And what Q Code seems to do, we tried to pitch a show to them six or so months ago, seven months ago. They didn't like it. No harm, no mm -hmm. foul. Everybody has mm -hmm. their preferences. But the, a lot of our conversation was, well, Q-Code wanted to know, what is it that you need from us? What hole can we fill to help you be successful with this? Because a place like Q-Code, they don't just want to buy the rights to it or just pay money for it. They want to help you. And one of the ways that we were discussing them helping us was, hey, we want to write it. And yeah, we could engineer it and we could sound design it and we could find actors for it. But that's not really where our strong suits are for the, for myself and the other two who are working on that particular project. So it would mm -hmm. be great if you could pick that up for us. And that, that all comes down to, you know, what are you willing to give up for that? What are you willing to outsource for that? Because you don't always have to work with a studio to get some of these things done. I mean, like if you don't like editing and engineering, you can hire somebody to do that, but then you come down to money. When you're partnering with a studio, right. you're giving away some, some amount of ownership and, 
there's a benefit mm-hmm. to doing it and there's also something you're forfeiting for it. So there's no right yeah. answer. It's it's with it's what you're comfortable right. with. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, what about yeah. going to uh, you know like like a, a network existing networks like uh, Earwolf things like that that are you know doing we you know that's a comedy mm-hmm. network uh, approaching them or are they pretty much doing all their own? I feel like you know, they're like Q code maybe stuff? are they. Are they similar to Q code? I think maybe. I don't. I don't have. I do not have any direct experience with Earwolf in particular. I haven't worked with them before. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we're talking about podcast networks, generally the draw is that the podcast network has the ability to get you more listenership, uh, which will help them to earn more ad revenue because you're now part of their network and their overall listener numbers, and you'll get some share of that. But those podcast networks unless they become a bit more mature than they are now. And again, I'm not speaking of Earwolf in particular. I have no experience with them. But most podcast networks that I do have experience with, they're mostly doing what I just described. They're not saying, oh, and we'll do the production for you, or oh, we'll do the engineering for you. They usually don't provide that benefit. That's usually something you would get from a larger, proper, um, let's say, uh, well-founded production house, not not from a podcast network. Right, like like a Wondery or or yes, right, like like one yep. or Gimlet or um, yep, even like even Spotify and even um, uh, Audible, but uh, but the problem with a lot of those is that they want to own your your IP. So if you as a right. cre- content creator, if you feel like like we do with with I Love Lucifer, we feel like it, it has a lot of legs and like we could see it as a graphic novel. We can see it as a TV Absolutely. series. Right, so we we would love to. We don't want to lose our IP. We want to hold on to. We just we are willing to share, and I think that's a good way. As you know, podcast podcast producers that are independent that also want to straddle both sides of the fence. I think that's a good way to look at it. You know, I I always tell people try to hold on to your IP. You don't want to. That's why working at Disney is is a nightmare if, as a creator because they want to own it. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, when they own it, you're out. They push you out because they don't have to hold you, you in a, there. You get a fee, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And if that's so, not what you're going for, then that's not it's not the right choice for you. But yeah. you guys are still looking to complete the funding round for season two. Have you gone yeah. to your community to ask for that? Nope, not yet. No. Not yet. We see. We feel very shy about. See, this is the thing about creators. We suck with money. Mm-hmm. We're like the worst. We really <laughs> <Yes>. are. <laughs> We suck about it. This is why we need to talk to it's you, the, Tanner. The business end. Yeah. And when I say <laughs> we, end. I know that I'm not talking about just me and Dawn. I know you guys are out there. I know people that are, I know, look, some of you do it for just passion. And I know a lot of you have met you and you're awesome and you put out great content and you're like, I don't care if, you know, I'm just going to keep doing it. Doesn't matter. And mm-hmm. I, I applaud you so much. But I mean, there are other ones, other producers like us that are out there going, I don't can't think of the money thing i don't know what to do like i hate asking people for money yeah it's it's the it's the nonprofit conundrum right Mm -hmm. Nonprofit people face this same thing you you get very upset like if you heard a ceo for ibm made two million dollars a year you'd be like ah yeah it's ibm of course he's making two million dollars a year but -hmm. if you heard that a ceo at a nonprofit was making two million dollars a year you say what does she get she doesn't deserve that you know like right there there's this there's this thing about altruism and about art where money is not supposed to enter that space and as soon as it does it means somebody's lying about something which is actually fucking terrible <laughs> because <laughs> artists deserve to make a mo- deserve to make a living too especially if there is an entire community out there that is you know they're showing up they're consuming it it's part of their day they appreciate it they know they love it and i don't think that these days like I would be willing to bet you that if you did go to your community and you said, hey, look, we're doing a GoFundMe or we're doing a Indiegogo or, or any of those platforms and we, we need to hit this in order to really, in order to pay our actors, in order to you know, afford our costs, in order to not lose money on this. We need to make X mm-hmm. dollars. We want to come to you to help that. And I think that people are way more open to that now and especially for audio dramas uh, than they used to be. And I would consider that as a serious option for you guys. I mean, if you were an interview podcast, that this is just all you did, that's probably a way harder sell. Mm -hmm. But if you're somebody trying to green light season two and you've already got, you know, a whole bunch of listeners who who love season one and they want season Mm -hmm. two. I mean, think about how many times maybe in your own experience, Susie or Don, where you've been in love with a series on television and they just shit can it. 
And you're like, I yeah. would have, I would have given you ten bucks. <laughs> like it would have been cool to keep that yeah. up, but. Yeah. Totally, totally. That's no, true. It's yeah. true. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's. No, I hear you. So and like we did does... that for we did. Yeah. I was going to say we did that for our short film, so we know what it's like. We did it Indiegogo, yeah. and it you know again in it's a full time it, job. It's a full time <laughs> oh, yeah. job for for that, and but that's okay. I mean, I think it's worth it. I think I, I hear what you're saying, and I think it's worth it. If anybody ha- is listening, wants to know how to do that, you can hit me up and DM me on on a um, mm-hmm. on a. Twitter or wherever you find me, Susie Singer Carter, because I, I have a, we did pretty well on our Indiegogo, so I can help yeah. you with that. But yeah, it is. And work. if anyone out there listening wants to just, you know, give us a lot of money, that's cool too. You can contact well, so, us. Yeah, that's so, true so too. I, yeah. I, I know, I know that you're, I know that you're, sem- you're, you're being funny, Don, but in, in reality, you know, saying something like, Hey, Anybody who supports this project for season two, let's say you make tiers, you can give ten bucks, you can give fifty, you can give a thousand. So I mean, I've I've been part of f- crowdfunding campaigns where somebody's given ten grand in a single yeah. sweep we just got, because they wanted that We got that. that. Thing. We that yeah. that happened it, on that our That happened short to film. us. It does yeah. happen. Tanner, totally. Yeah. And and you can, you know, people love the idea of their names appearing in the credits. You know, having mm-hmm. five available spots for. If you sponsor season Executive two, producer and yeah, yeah, yeah. well, n- you could even take it beyond that, you know, because this is mostly yeah. an audio medium. So there's not credits, so to speak. There's show notes. But you could say, hey, yeah. there's five spots where if you support this, uh, if you support this drive to bring season two of I Love Lucifer to life, if you're one of these five people at the thousand, I'm being arbitrary, the thousand dollar level, you'll actually get to voice a character in this season. Mm-hmm. And people mm-hmm. love that shit, especially in a community like yeah. this, especially in audio drama. They would kill for an opportunity like that or give you money. They wouldn't have to kill you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for our show, it's more appropriate if they kill us. Yes, yeah. right. And then eat you, maybe. <laughs> we use it. We use it. I was going to bring up another, you know, another revenue source, which we're, I mean, we're already doing advertising, but that is to get to procure a sponsor. Uh, somebody who is, you know, brought to you, Lila Lucy, you're brought to you by blah, or if on a bigger level, or sponsors. Uh, what are the realities of that? And and do you need, it's like, are reviews, ratings, followers, and top 10 lists, you know, enough, or do you have to have big audience downloads? There's a difference between ads and sponsorships. So with ads, it's all about the number of downloads you have, because you're going to get X dollar, and I know you guys know this, I'm saying this for the benefit of anybody listening. Uh, there's sure. something called a CPM, cost per milli. It's how many dollars you're going to get for every 1,000 peop- one, every 1,000 downloads that an episode receives. So if you get 1,000 downloads, you get, let's say, $30. Now, most people who have podcasts are like, oh, I don't even have that. <laughs> so ads for most podcasters are not going to bring in a significant amount of revenue or income for them. And so while I do encourage people to run ads in their podcast if they're comfortable with it, the the realistic expectation is that, you know, it it might help you cover your hosting after six months, you might be making a hundred dollars a month. It's it, but you, until you hit, you know, 10,000, 30,000, 50,000 downloads, you're not really making much money. You're not even making scratch really a sponsor on the other hand. And I, I give this example a lot. Let's say you have a podcast that is about home improvement and there's a local bank that specializes in home improvement loans and they know they don't know how many listeners you have and it really doesn't matter but they know that your podcast is a local podcast you're serving the local community and your podcast is all about home improvement well for that bank it might be worth ten thousand dollars to them to have one person convert on a home improvement loan and so when they approach paying a podcast they're thinking okay one percent of this audience equals this many conversions because they're going to be very conservative in their assumptions. Let's say 1% of their audience, how many listeners do they have? They have 200 listeners. Okay, well, that's two people. If two people convert on a home improvement loan, we make $40,000 in, I don't know, I don't know how banks work, but they make $40,000 yeah. in profit, let's say. And okay, so I guess, sure, we'll sponsor your first season for 10000 Now, that's way more money than, than you're apt to get through your first year of you know, trying, to sell, trying to sell somebody on ad spots. So sponsorship, I, th- I think, is actually the way for most beginner podcasters to go. You have to have a good understanding of your audience, though, and you have to make sure that the person you're appro- approaching for sponsorship is in alignment somehow. For I Love Lucifer, I'm trying to think of a, pro- a product or a service or, you know, if there was a streaming horror network, like a, a Netflix of horror, I would think that that would be, 
that would be an alignment. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. sponsorships are a great way to go. What about festivals? And because there's so many of them popping up because podcasts are getting so popular. Mm-hmm. There's so many of them. And, you know, I have my opinion about them in terms of a, being a screenwriter and all that stuff. I mean, I'm very leery of them unless they have been around mm-hmm. for a long time. And even well, then. festivals and awards. Yeah. Awards competitions are really, you know, as opposed to just festivals themselves. Yeah, I but, think the benefit of being like it's it's a really great benefit for me to be able to say I'm one of the top 22 most influential people in podcasting, according to Podcast Magazine. That's a great thing to put on my website. Um, however, while Podcast Magazine elected to include me in that list, a lot of these award ceremonies, it's not exactly and you're probably you're both probably well familiar with this. Like there is a buy in process if mm-hmm. you want to be considered as mm-hmm. if you want to be uh, considered for being able to be voted for, there's a certain amount of money you must pay ahead of time. Mm-hmm. It's And I don't know that that is unscrupulous so much as it's maybe not what the perception is outside of the business. So if you want to get a Webby, there's a certain amount of money you need to pay to be in consideration to be voted for to get a Webby. And, and the Webbies are not includes... cheap. I just want to interject. I just want to right. say they're it's expensive, the mm-hmm. Webby. Yeah, uh, it, it, carry on. Especially Sorry for... No, that's okay. I mean, I'm glad you pointed it out. Uh, and that's especially true for independent podcasters who have, you know, they have no money. They're like, $100? <laughs> It'll take me forever to earn that money back. And if you look at the most recent podcast awards ceremony, which was uh, from iHeartRadio, I'm looking at the list right now as I say this, the winner for the best comedy podcast was Smartless, which is produced right. by Wonder or Amazon. And then Hello. the winner for best crime podcast, I mean, like, those, it's all studio. It's yeah. all studio, and it's so unfortunate. I think there's space in this medium for – there may be an audio drama awards I, that I'm not aware of, but I, I would love to see somebody stand up an organization that was just for indies. And indies to me doesn't mean just not owned by a studio. It means you don't have, you know, you don't have Hollywood talent on your team. You don't have – a great studio that's just decided that they're going to help you out or the, to me indie means you're in your basement you're in your bedroom you're making it work mm-hmm. with minimal products and I, you're making it work with low quality gear you're and you're doing a good job of it and i feel like those are the people that really need to be recognized <laughs> uh, and i would love to see more of that iheart radio in particular while I don't think there was a buy-in process, I, I've asked a couple people about that. There doesn't seem to have been. Uh, mm-hmm. But who cares if Amazon won an award, right? <laughs> but but, exactly. for, but for us little right. folks, when we do get an award, it does feel really good, and it does look good mm-hmm. on a resume, you know, so to speak. So to say that they're without benefit or value is hard for me to mm-hmm. say. Right, right. I mean, I'm just thinking about, like, we won an award for our Love Conquers Alls, which is interview. That was, mm-hmm. it came out of left field, but, and that has been good because, because we're trying, it's a, it's a different kind of legitimate, you know, it legitimizes us in a certain way in the yeah. caregiving community. So it's like, oh, this, this podcast is a good podcast to go on because they've been acknowledged. But as far as, you know, uh, awards go in terms of narrative, I don't know. And, and I, and just to tell the listeners that, I, I signed up to be a listener for the Ambies this year just because I wanted to be, I wanted to be, you know, a part of the community and, and listen to what's out there and, and, and be able to vote and help other independents, you know, when, be acknowledged for their work. And, and honestly, guys, not, no, I'm not throwing shade on anybody in particular, but most of the best ones that I loved were independent. All of them. I was like, oh, this is so good. Who's doing this? And it was completely 100% independent. And the ones that weren't independent that were studio or network were definitely a different quality. And they just announced their finalists. And they're all, they're none that I voted for. None. Not one. Mm -hmm. All all the major studio ones. You guys won an award for the uh, Audioverse Awards, didn't you? For I Love well, Lucifer. Well, we're, we were we're finalists in four categories, but we haven't heard yet. They haven't yeah. announced the mm. fi- the who won yet. So what the was process. what was that process like for you guys? Oh my gosh! Well, 
the <laughs> it's more it was more the process for the people who had to vote. Yeah. <laughs> it's from what we understood it, it's well we did it too. It was the most painful process ever. People were like, like people we're voting for said, you only cuz we, we love you. We, no, or they're saying we only or finished we it. We just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, like and it's been going on for since October. Yeah, is that right? Since I think the first round started in October, and now it's late February, and we still don't know. So, uh, but we we were, you know, we were in seven categories. We got finalists in four, and now we're just waiting to hear. But 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 no shade on on Audioverse because they are what you're talking about, Tanner. There's a they're a small like group. I think they're run by two guys or something that are like. Completely, completely. But they have a, a lot of people, like a lot of you know people, get involved in it and, mm-hmm. and put and you know it's 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 not tiny, uh, but that is for. But they also have there are some studio in there also. But it was no, no, mainly of course they do. No, I, of course yeah, they do. Yeah. They have both. They have a they have they have independent and then they have studio. But I think you know I I like what they're doing because they're taking their time and they try to make it as hard as possible to cheat. And that's why it's so hard mm-hmm. to vote because <laughs> they tried to make it so hard to cheat. Mm. So. I think it's easier to cheat voting on the president of the United States than it is for the audio first awards. <laughs> Gosh, I hope that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> but I want to um, tell. Yeah. I want I want you to tell our listeners like who what you're doing. I'm reading it from my phone. Your super secret <laughs> sign up and other news from Jeff. The indie podcaster from Tanner of Tanner Helps and Greg from Indie Drop, who also is one of my favorite people, too. And they are best, really close friends, Tanner and Greg. So, duh, of course, because they're both terrific people. What are you guys up so, to? For anybody who's listening who is a podcaster, who's thinking about becoming a podcaster, or maybe you're dating a podcaster and you just want to understand <laughs> what, what the hell they're doing <laughs> with all their time. Uh, Jeff and Greg and I, we work together to just help people be better. We don't charge money for most of what we do. We have consultant businesses and we have businesses on our own, of course. But what we do online is mostly free help. My podcast, which is Podcasting Sucks at PodcastingSucks.com, is a daily show that just answers questions. I'm just there to show up and try to give advice. Jeff does something similar on a weekly basis with his, with his podcast and Greg owns the Indie Drop-In Network. Uh, which if you're in the comedy, horror, true crime, uh, paranormal genres of podcasts, you can submit your episodes for free to Indie Drop-In, and Indie Drop-In will distribute that episode on other podcasts so that you can get in front of new people, and he does it for free. We're deciding to come together and create a new podcast called, without abandoning anything we're already doing independently, uh, called Podcast Garage, which is sitting down with a podcaster once a week and doing a long-form 60 minutes or so audit of their podcast to try to, you know, go over their artwork, go over their production value, go over their equipment, tell them how they could improve. And we think that that's a lot of benefit for uh, for those individuals because podcast audits can be very expensive depending on who's doing them and can be of varying value depending on who's doing them. Terrific. However, we can only do one of those. We can only do one of those a week. And Nobody wants to hear a podcast audit every day. Who's going to tune in for that, right? <laughs> uh, so we're doing this other thing that if you go to podcastingsucks.com forward slash register, you'll fill out a form. I'm not going to tell you anything about what this thing is, but I will tell you that it's myself, Jeff, and Greg, and it is a way for us to help more people without having to feature them on that show. Because, of course, if you can only do one a week, you can only help so many people so quickly. Uh, so we're putting together, I'll say it's a, a community-centric kind of thing uh, that is that will be free. And if you register for it at podcastingsucks.com forward slash register, you will be invited to that new thing on Monday or Tuesday of this upcoming week. I don't know when this episode airs, so maybe it's already live. But if not... You'll, you'll want to. Yes, you have That's to. Fantastic. You, I'm telling you, you guys, I listen to Podcasting Sucks every day. It's like, I love you. I love everything that you say. And it's and it's golden. And it's worth it's worth your time. A hundred percent, a thousand percent. So with and these three guys, all of them, Jeff is the same way. And Greg is like amazingly just astute in this field. And, and also just 
I, I love him. He's incredible. I, I talked to he. I we did a we did an indie drop with him, and it's been so much. We had so much fun, and we had a lot of numbers go up. And I just want to work with him all the time too. So take advantage of this because it, these are three amazing people, and nobody does this. This is incredible. So take advantage of and it. And these are professionals who get paid for what they do. Yeah. And the for them to put out information to help people just to help them i'm signing up is <laughs> it's spectacular well, it's, so it's, it's, it's wonderful the, it's, i love that you said that don because it's the recognition of like we there are two kinds of people there are people who don't have the money but need the help and then there are the kinds of people who have the help and need the money but don't want to do the work themselves <laughs> so so mm -hmm. i know that our value in our personal businesses are that we work mostly with people who have larger budget budgets who are businesses, and, and they, they don't care if they get the information for free. They just want somebody else to do it for them. So that's where we make mm -hmm. our money. When it comes to the independent yeah. people, we just we know they can't afford it, and we know they need the help, so we're doing everything we can to, you know, be it, to, to make it free for them. That's kind of what we believe in. Beautiful. That's, it's that absolutely is, it beautiful. Is beautiful. Anything <laughs> else you want to promote while we're here? Oh, Anything else? Yeah. like? Because I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I just so appreciate it and grateful for your time and all of your wise, sage advice for us. And, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for, thank you. Well, it's an honor to have you on our show. I do have these two friends who work with a really great team of people who are creating a podcast uh, called I Love Lucifer and they're working on C season two. And who knows, oh, they might yes. be launching a GoFundMe or something soon to try to get that season two off the ground and i would encourage anybody listening to keep their eyes open for that because Aww. these two are oh, great folks oh, wow they're making a big good i can't wait to meet them big love i, I can't to wait you. to meet them and listen to <laughs> it ba -boom, ba -boom. They're, they're good good people yeah. what's the last no, question i did have Don? Go ahead. i did have one last question and that is is i love lucifer the podcast really the greatest podcast ever yeah <laughs> don i think it's pretty good I, i'll t i'll tell you what um th <laughs> there is no idiot. podcast that i would put in its category you guys, first of all, the level of involvement that you two have is really impressive, uh, not just as the writers, but you, I have worked, I'm obviously not going to name any names here, but I've worked with people in the audio drama space who are a lot more concerned with the paycheck at the end of it being a success than they are about taking care of the people they're working with. And I've seen a lot of audio dramas fail for that reason. The amount of passion and priority that you guys put passion you put into the show but priority that you put on to paying your actors paying the people who are making it possible and realizing that it's not you two on a journey as the writers the gods of the universe it is instead all of you are on a team and you got to get mm. there together and that's very rare in any space really but in my personal experience in the, in the audio drama space so it's good to see it and you, you two are just thank great you. so for that reason maybe oh, maybe it you. is the greatest podcast in the uh, world. <laughs> don you're don you're you're shameless don you're absolutely shameless hell yes <laughs> You know what I've learned one I've I've learned something if I've not learned it, you have to be <laughs> you got to toot your own flipping yeah. horn yeah. sometimes you got to toot your own horn or it's not going to get tooted absolutely oh my That's god That's right <laughs> uh, anyway well I thank you so much and I I just uh, hope everybody got a lot out of this as much as I did I continue to learn from you all the time listen to podcasting sucks all the time he's always bringing new stuff he's irreverent he doesn't give you bullshit and um you know and if you don't like if you want to be bullshitted don't listen to him to tanner okay but because i'm telling Please you don't. he does not yeah he does not he doesn't hold back he tells the truth and that's rare so we are grateful we thank you we will i wish you continued luck and i uh, on all of your endeavors of which there are many and don't forget us because we're always going to want to work with you and, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we thank well, thanks, you already Janice. for all the help you've done for us and you are been helping us Absolutely. so much so thank you thank you thank you um and that's it and not only is he helping us but he's helping us and we're getting results and that's what's uh, important and thank you. you know yay. results good <laughs> thank you YouTube. results that means good a lot. thank you yeah all right well so everyone like us and review us and subscribe and listen to all if you haven't listened to all the episodes please do start at episode one i've known a few people who started like on episode four and don't do make that sense start at episode <laughs> one listen through the end listen yeah. for more bonus episodes coming up yep and uh yeah and and we possibly a, a indiegogo i don't know Possibly. Tanner said to possibly. do it, possibly. <laughs> all right, bye, you all. We love you. I love this fur. Yeah.
You can't write that shit. <laughs>